Hey everyone, today I wanted to rank all five of the Final Destination movies from my least favorite to my favorite. I'll give you a little bit about the movies, what I like, a little bit what I don't like. Uh, this series, this is the first time I sat down and watched it was this week. And overall I did really enjoy it, thought it was a pretty fun series. Now, whenever I get into the, the things that I did and didn't like, I will be talking about some spoilers obviously. So if you've never seen this series and you'd be interested one day in watching it, uh, you know, maybe you'd want to watch the movies first and then watch this or if you don't care then you know fine with that too but uh this will have some spoilers in it because i'll talk about things i do and don't like so um before i get into that i wanted to mention that i'm wearing a mothman t-shirt if you're aware of what the mothman supposedly was it was in west virginia uh, there was this sighting of a mothman that was supposedly a, a prophecy of death or someone that would uh, bring about a warning of death and I thought that was a very fitting movie or a shirt to wear for these movies um, I saw it and I was looking through my t-shirts today and I was like you know what this is fitting so I thought that was interesting I wanted to mention that but starting off with my least favorite movie in the series by a long shot is Final Destination 4 or The Final Destination honestly this this one is actually pretty painful to watch this was the only one that I was like wow this is bad uh, there wasn't very much redeem or very many redeemable things about it. Um, the things I didn't like, other than like specifically that I didn't like, the opening was the only opening out of all five movies that I thought was really just not that great. It was at a NASCAR track or just a race car track, and it just it looked really bad, especially because it was so much CGI. And because this movie was originally in theaters in 3D mixed with like really bad cgi it just looks terrible uh but not only that but you have some of like the worst acting in the series and just some of the worst characters none of the characters were really all that likable other than maybe like the main one and then uh the actor who actually played bubba in forrest gump is a character in this movie and uh, it's unfortunate he's in the worst one but yeah, he's like really the only like redeemable character and then the main one whose name i honestly have already forgotten uh but uh some of the good things about this movie if you're into like rock or metal uh shine down devour was the opening to this movie and it plays right before the racetrack and i thought that was a pretty interesting song to start off this movie which actually was the best part about it in my opinion the rest of the movie there's nothing else that i was like oh yeah that was just as cool um there was uh another scene later on about half an hour later that was uh the tow truck driver um he gets killed in a pretty hilarious way actually he's this racist guy and he doesn't like the character who's played by i'm just gonna call him bubba but uh who's played by you know that actor and earlier in the movie they have an argument and he goes to his house and he plans on doing something and i assume burning a cross in his yard and he has like the lighter fluid and he's all this stuff well, all of a sudden something happens where there's a trail of lighter fluid and he gets hooked onto something and it creates a spark of the, the dragging on the ground this like anchor it anchors around his leg and just like lights him on fire and he's going down the street while his, his truck's just driving on its own somehow gets into like neutral and it's drifting downhill and he's just on fire getting dragged down the road and meanwhile bubba's out there like watching like what the heck um, I want to say the guy's name was like Charles or something, by the way, but I don't know. That's the thing, like, uh, the character who was Bubba. Um, I want to say his name was like Charles or something like that, but I, I've already forgotten. This movie was so bad, I just, I've already, like, erased it from my memory. This one was the only one in the series I'm never going to watch again. Uh, I'd watch any of these other ones. So, uh, going to the next one, that is a big step up uh and in terms of just quality of movie is final destination 2 i did really enjoy this one and in some ways it's i think better than the original but overall i would have to say that i i think that the first one was better and so that's why i had to put number two the second final destination movie at number four on this list um what i didn't really like about it is i thought the characters weren't as interesting while clear rivers was returned uh the character clear rivers um who i think her real name is ali carter um but this the, the grouping of characters in this one just aren't as likable um you have a group of characters that were just on a highway together their lives were saved by this girl 
and they don't know each other before this moment, but they come together. Some of them don't like each other, and it's okay, but it's just, I don't know, there's no connection with them before that moment. Um, and something that's kind of a pro and a con at the same time, the song Highway to Hell was used in this movie, which is an ACDC song, if you're not aware. One of my favorite bands, one of my favorite classic rock bands. So it's like, oh, cool, ACDC. But it's only used very briefly when she turns on the radio and she switches it right off. And I was like, oh, I would have liked that to have been in it longer. Um, and then our main character from the original movie, who is actually, I think, my favorite character in all of these movies. His name is Alex. And his death was not in the original and it's just explained very briefly in a newspaper article and talked about very briefly by clear uh that he was killed by just a random falling brick which i feel like compared to all the other deaths in this series that's just very lame like you get these very elaborate deaths from characters and just the main one like the most i i guess the the main character in the first movie which is the most iconic probably dies off screen you never see him again by a falling brick it's just like that that was lame i don't know um but other than that i mean this movie like i said it have a lot of creative kills and a lot of deaths we have the return of clear rivers uh the opening car crash scene was really great just seeing the the cop how he dies he gets coffee spilled on his lap then a log because he was distracted falls off the truck flies through his car and just absolutely wrecks him um the barbecue death scene where the kid is barbecuing the bar the barbecue or the grill explodes and blows him to pieces and then his arm falls on his mom's plate and she just freaks out um the kid that dies from the sheet of glass that falls on him it just flattens him and just explodes him everywhere um and then there was the wire fence for the the drug addict who was just out in the middle of like an open field they they ducked or something there was an explosion they all ducked and this fence just goes flying over them and all of a sudden it, he turns around and just gets cut into pieces and falls into like multiple different pieces because the wire cuts him up. Um, I, those were some memorable deaths and I liked all of those. Uh, so yeah, th this movie did have some pretty interesting deaths. Overall, the characters I didn't feel like were as strong as the first one, so I had to put this one number four. But I, I still thought this was a pretty fun movie and it was just slightly less interesting. Um, and then number three is the original Final Destination, uh, where this movie, I feel like, had its strong points was the characters, and just at the time, you know, this was an original idea where it hadn't been seen before, um, but some of the negatives is that the deaths aren't as believable for some of them, they're like really too, I guess, uh, elaborate, where it just doesn't make any sense, the one character, Todd, I don't even remember, I think there's like a clothesline hanging above a shower, he slips and it wraps around his neck. He hangs himself because he can't he can't grip the floor because it's covered in soap and he just chokes himself. Uh, and then the most elaborate, over-the-top kill <laughs> is in this movie, I thought at least. The teacher, <clears throat> excuse me, who gets saved, she is in her house and all of a sudden Rocky Mountain High by John Denver, which is like the theme song of this movie, um, is playing. And she notices it, and she's like, oh, I love this song. Actually, I think she, she's the one that puts it on. And all of a sudden, uh, something explodes. Glass goes in her throat. She goes, and there's all of a sudden a fire. And she almost dies by the fire. She tries to grab a rag to stop the bleeding from her throat, but because the rag is wrapped around knives, the knives fall on her and pale her. Uh, and then the chair falls on the knife and stabs her all the way through. It's like, holy crap. And then we see the main character, Alex, come in and grab the knife. Like, are you stupid? You're already being investigated by the FBI. Um, I thought it was funny, but it was just so elaborate and over the top. Uh, but overall, the kills in this one aren't as fun. There were a select few that were interesting. But, um, like, our, our one character, uh, I believe his name was Billy, uh, played by, I think his name is Sean William Scott. Um, he gets decapitated by a piece of metal flying off under a train, and, um, then the, probably the, I think the best kill in this one is the one girl who's dating this, this douchebag Carter, uh, she's, she's tired of them arguing, she's like, you know what, if you guys are just gonna sit there and argue all the time, you could drop dead, she takes, like, one step out and a bus just blows her to pieces, um, if you're unaware of this series, this series is meant to be hilarious with its deaths while being somewhat serious. 
I, I found it absolutely hilarious just watching characters just get taken out one by one. And this was the first time I'd ever seen any of these movies. And I'd seen maybe a scene here or there. I was, like, aware of what the premise was. But I'd never, like, watched the full movie before. And, um, yeah, this, this one really got me interested to watch the rest of the series. And like I said, it has some of the best characters. I think Alex Browning was the best character in the series. Clear Rivers was a great female lead. And then Billy Hitchcock, played by Sean William Scott, was just hilarious. Um, just this, the arguments between him and Carter every time Carter would do something and almost kill him he was like Carter you dick and just the way he delivered the line was funny um and then I think probably the best opening to any of these movies was the the airplane scene just how realistic that was seeing all the characters on board and then uh, the plane explode and, and uh our main character Alex just get engulfed in flames and then he realizes that that's what's going to happen if he doesn't get off the plane but uh, yeah, this this movie, I think, had one of the strongest, if not the strongest opening, and it kept the movie interesting enough, and then just, it's a very interesting, original uh, kind of idea that at the time, at least nothing like that had been made that I'm aware of, but, uh, so yeah, the original Final Destination comes in at number three, and number two is Final Destination 3. Uh, this one stars... Uh, What's her name? Let me check. Mary Elizabeth Winstead and Ryan Merriman, who uh, you'd probably recognize him, maybe not know the name, but he's in a lot of Disney Channel original movies like Luck of the Irish. Um, I think there's a one where like his is like house is a I think it's called Smart House. I don't even remember for sure. But yeah, the, those are what I or that's what I know him from was the Disney Channel original movies. And then Mary Elizabeth Winstead is a fairly well-known actress. And so, this movie I thought was pretty good for the most part. Um, other than those two main characters, though, I do have to say a lot of them were not that great. Uh, so while you have two really strong characters, you have a lot of just side characters that felt like they were just there to be killed. Um, and I feel like that was probably the point. There was no memorable song in this one that I can remember. And there's not really a connection like there was between one and two uh, with this movie other than them just hearing about oh there was these kids you know years ago that had this situation that death hunted them down um, and and really what I thought this movie really uh, struggled from was a good second half the second half of this movie really just like falls apart for me at least um, there was there comes a certain point where once these certain these characters die from there on I was just kind of like eh, it's not as good but it still was interesting and you wanted to know what was going to happen to these characters that you did like um, in the ending I didn't really like how all the characters that were left ended up dying together on a train uh, it was fine nothing really like wrong with it but I was like yeah that was a little bit disappointing where we saw in Final Destination two certain characters actually lived and it's the only characters in the series that ever end up living um i guess m you know past that movie and uh, you never find out about them at least what happens after that where all these characters just die off in this movie uh on a train or i think it was a subway crash and they all just die um but the some of the good things about this movie which there is a lot uh the roller coaster opening is another favorite of mine i thought this was a really great setting for a, a I guess a just giant disaster having a roller coaster derail because of like a technical issue um I really like that whenever Mary Elizabeth Winstead's character is taking photographs you get to see then like a hint of how they're gonna die you examine the photos as someone you know me not knowing how they're gonna actually die I'm like all right well how's that person gonna die so you're examining it and then when you actually see it, you're like, oh, and then you re-see the photo, and you're like, that's pretty good. Uh, the the best kill in the or kills in this series uh, is the tanning bed kills. That is the most brutal deaths, and it would be the worst in this series, um, just ahead of a different kill that would be kind of similar in a way. But this one is particularly brutal because most of the kills in this series, while the character might go through some pain, uh, they might end up escaping that, and then die from something else very quickly it seems like most of the kills in this series are very quick and they like can't escape it whereas this this is a slow death you're getting cooked by a tanning bed and you can't escape these two ditzy girls just get locked in there and the glass breaks and they're just burning all the bulbs are like melting their skin and 
oh, you see them just catch fire. I was like, oh, that would be so painful. And I think that was like the highlight of the series with the deaths. Um, and then the nail gun kill in this one's pretty fun where the girl is in a, like Home Depot or a Lowe's and you see that in their picture, she's got a gun pointed at her and you see the guy playing with the nail gun and something happens where she falls backwards into the nail gun and it shoots like through her back of her head and pins her hand to her face and nails just keep shooting from the gun into her head. Uh, that was a pretty interesting set of or set of death. And then the uh, the other character, her boyfriend, his death, he gets smashed by a cherry picker, like bucket or something, and just gets completely flattened. But uh, yeah, that this one for me was a pretty fun movie. It was just ahead of number one. Uh, two through four for me were really close, and all of them were really like, I could see myself watching any one of them again and enjoying them a little bit maybe more or less than you know the first time I watched it but um the only one that for me was a clear-cut winner for number one was this most recent one which is very rare in a series being uh a, a horror movie franchise where the newest one is the best one but Final Destination 5 for me was very good from start to finish uh there was only really one character I didn't really like and uh she was while she was kind of a main character, she wasn't as, I guess, important. And uh, I felt like in this one more than any of them, the way characters die and the whole way the movie flows, the importance of each character, every character seems to have a purpose, even if it's very minor. Something they'll do triggers something else to another character. And I really like that. Um, I, I really didn't have any negative things other than that one character I didn't really like. Uh, she's the main character's girlfriend she just kind of felt like she was acted really poorly um maybe that was just the way she was told to act but the opening bridge collapsing was great and then the tar death from i believe his name's david sander or david what's his name sandifer i don't know something like that or david cockner that's his name um he's the one from uh anchorman who who plays one of the the main four guys he gets in a premonition with how he would have died. Tar just pours out onto his face and his hands and his just body, and he just falls off the bridge. Where, you know, how like molten tar just oh, that would hurt so bad. Um, and then Candace's death, uh, I believe she was the gymnast. How, whenever she gets the the chalk blown in her face from the fan she does a flip and lands and just breaks her body her legs go over her and her spine's coming out of her and her legs are crushed and smashed it was like oh that that scene was probably the third best death in the series i thought that was a great one uh this movie to me also has some of the best humor since the original one and uh i thought some of the characters that they brought in just for that fact of humor were pretty fitting and their deaths while uh, you know, you were like looking forward to them dying the whole time. You're like, all right, I don't like you. Let's kill you off. And you're like, all right, that death was pretty funny. The one guy gets killed by a statue of Buddha after he calls it fat. Um, uh, I believe there's a laser eye surgery scene where this girl who's kind of, uh, she's a little bit unlikable at the beginning of the movie. She kind of redeems herself as it goes on, but uh, she dies because she's having laser eye surgery done. And the, the, laser turns itself all the way up and then she tries to stop it and accidentally starts it when it hits the ground it burns through her eye and blinds her and then she she was squeezing a teddy bear so hard that it's uh its eye popped off she slips on the fake eye falls out the window lands on the ground then her eye pops out and gets run over by a car it was like this is so elaborate but it's funny um and then the one character who i honestly at first was like really i was like this character is so annoying but i realized by the end of it what they were doing or, or at a certain point what they're trying to do uh you're if you watch wrestling you're familiar with this term what a heel turn is but peter's like heel turn in this movie it basically it means turning bad and or, or turning evil this character peter he's best friends with the main character but when his girlfriend candace dies he slowly starts to just go nuts and he goes from like a likable character to a really annoying uh losing his kind of cool insanity character just straight up ready to kill a civilian just for no reason to save his own life and he tries to kill uh the main character's girlfriend and him and the funny thing is is the whole time i'm looking i'm like this guy looks like a young tom cruise and then i found out that 
in uh, some movie that he actually played Tom Cruise and he looks just like him and I, I thought that was really funny but having Peter as like a character who was good turned bad adds like a new element to the series that it hadn't had at this point um, and then the to me the two best parts of this movie one, both were the endings but how at the ending you see that the end of this movie was actually the start of the original Final Destination how when the two characters that you think live get on the plane to go to Paris, or actually that's the plane that was leaving for Paris at the beginning of Final Destination where Alex has the premonition, then it's going to crash, and they you know that they're not going to escape because this plane crashes, and they end up dying on it. And I was like, that is a great way to end the series. And then just after that, you have the, the kind of uh, montage of all the deaths in the series, Played by ACDC's If You Want Blood, You've Got It. And that's my probably my favorite ACDC song. Um, and I just thought that was awesome. I was like, oh, that's a perfect song for this. And it was like, it's a fun song for funny deaths. And it's it just, I thought it was perfect. Um, and this was by far my favorite in the series, just from start to finish. Uh, one thing I hadn't mentioned to date, the actor who plays Candyman, the, the horror villain or horror uh, slasher character, uh, is in... I think three of these movies is in one two and five and he fits i feel like really well in this movie than more so than any of them uh and just this movie in general i feel like i if you told me to sit down and watch one of them this one to me has the most uh or the best set of kills that are most diverse and the movie as a whole has the best character depths and best writing that if they ever were to make another one i hope that the writers and the director of this one got together and made one similar to this but i honestly feel like this one ends so perfectly that uh i really almost don't want another one and having four come before this it was like seeing the worst one i was like so like oh god how's five gonna be if four is this bad and then i was like wow five is actually the best one it was like a really good surprise so yeah uh that's my ranking uh again four being the worst uh Final Destination 2 being the number 4, Final Destination 1 being a number 3, Final Destination 3 being a number 2, and Final Destination 5 being a number 1. Uh, let me know your ranking in the comment section. If you like this series, I definitely will check it out again sometime. I thought it was pretty fun. And uh, let me know which one, you're, you know, like you said, was your ranking and uh, your know, favorite kills or death scenes or whatever. Uh, mine, like I said, was in number three with the tanning bed. That one was pretty brutal. So thanks for watching if you sat through this whole thing, and I will talk to you guys soon. See ya.